In this segment, we will talk about the energy. How is this energy made available for muscle contraction? Energy for muscle contraction. When the muscles contract for formation of actin myosin bridge, the ATP needs to be hydrolyzed. That means there has to be a constant supply of ATP. In vertebrates and few invertebrates, there are two organic compounds which provide energy and they are known as phosphagens. Basically, they are phosphate generating substances so that the energy can be made available. So there are two phosphagens. One phosphagen which we are very well aware of that is ATP and the second one is known as phosphocreatin or creatine phosphate. So this is called phosphocreatin or the other name is creatine phosphate. Creatine phosphate. And these are the two substances which provide energy. ATP and creatine phosphate. Now, which are those steps and how this energy is released? So, let us talk about all these steps. The first is ATP is hydrolyzed to produce ADP, inorganic phosphate and energy. The enzyme which is going to help in this reaction is ATPase. ATPase. And we have seen that the myosin head acts as ATPase. So this ATPase is actually myosin head which is working as this enzyme and is helping in breakdown of ATP to release this energy. And this energy is used for making actin myosin cross bridges. Used for actin myosin cross bridge formation. And these bridges are very important when the muscle has to contract. If this goes on, because every muscle cell has a limited stock of ATP. Suppose that ATP gets exhausted and continuous requirement of ATP is there. That means muscle is continuously contracting but the amount of ATP that the cell has is limited. That means we have to supply that ATP continuously. So the second reaction is basically generation of this ATP and this is the place where the second phosphagen plays its role. The second phosphagen that is creatine phosphate reacts with this ADP. Basically it is giving its phosphate and energy to ADP. The ADP which is generated in the first step gets used up here and what is happening here is ATP gets synthesized and the phosphate of creatine phosphate has been given to this ADP. After ATP generation, this creatine molecule is again set free. So if muscle contraction is taking place, first is energy supplied directly from ATP. But as we said, the number of ATP molecules in the cell are going to be limited. Suppose that ATP gets exhausted, then immediately Creatine phosphate gives its phosphate to ADP generated in the first step to regenerate ATP so that the continuous supply of ATP for muscle contraction is maintained. If after this also the ATP requirement goes on increasing, then step number three is anaerobic breakdown of glucose. In muscles, there is glycogen stored. So glycogen is first converted into glucose and then glucose 
is n aerobically broken down into lactic acid plus little bit of energy is also generated this is n aerobic respiration so this lactic acid is produced some lactic acid diffuses into the blood and then goes into the other muscle fibers and is converted into glycogen most of the lactic acid so we are on step number four most of lactic acid goes to liver in liver there are two reactions or two ways in which this lactic acid would be converted lactic acid two parts four fifth part that means the major part of lactic acid is converted into glycogen it is again converted into glycogen and is stored there this is happening in liver it is in liver the remaining that is one fifth lactic acid is broken down into carbon dioxide plus water plus energy this energy which is released here is used to regenerate the second phosphagen that is creatine phosphate so we will write step number five here what is going to happen is creatine phosphate would use this energy and will sorry creatine not creatine phosphate creatine will use this energy and inorganic phosphate and we get creatine phosphate that means in a cell there is always atp available this atp amount is limited if contraction takes place for a short period of time this atp is uh, more than enough to help in this contraction procedure or process once that atp gets exhausted more atp has to be regenerated and that is done by the second phosphagen which is creatine phosphate it gives that phosphate to adp and atp is generated and it is used up for the contraction purpose the enzyme here is creatine kinase which is helping in this reaction if after these two phosphagens supplying energy if still there is continuous uh, demand for atp then anaerobic breakdown takes place first glycogen is converted into glucose and glucose into lactic acid this is actually an anaerobic breakdown this lactic acid has to undergo some other uh, procedure but this energy is also released little bit energy that is uh, used up for contraction what happens to this lactic acid which is produced in the muscle some part very small part of lactic acid diffuses into the blood it goes into smooth muscles and there it gets converted into glycogen a major part of lactic acid goes to the liver in liver there are two pathways which this lactic acid is going to follow the major part that is four fifth part of lactic acid gets converted into glycogen and is stored in liver because this is happening in the liver itself a smaller part that is one fifth part is broken down into carbon dioxide water and energy is released this energy which is released from this lactic acid is used to regenerate the second phosphagen that is creatine phosphate so by these different reactions the atp supply for muscle contraction has to be continuously maintained and there are two phosphagens which are helping in this process atp that is adenosine triphosphate the third bond breaks and releases the energy the energy or rather hydrolysis of atp is helped by an enzyme that is myosin head and we have seen how this energy is used up it is used up to make actin myosin cross bridge and a part of that energy by this myosin head to take a power stroke so that the actin filaments can slide into or in between the myosin filaments if this stock of atp is exhausted then the
the other phosphagen comes into action. And again it is going to give that ATP which will be used up. If that also is not sufficient then anaerobic breakdown will take place and this anaerobic breakdown results in formation of lactic acid. We have also heard of that if lactic acid accumulates in the muscle that results into muscle fatigue because lactic acid is responsible for causing that fatigue. But slowly this is broken down and this reaction that is regeneration of creatine phosphate takes place in relaxed or relaxing muscle. In relaxed muscle. So when the muscle is relaxed that is the time this creatine phosphate is regenerated and stored so that whenever that situation arises it can be used 